We're at the Mishnah at the bottom of Daf Lamedal Ramad Beis. Zokdei Lege Mishnah Esrik HaGozel a stolen Esrik Vayovish a dried Esrik. Pasul is pasul for the mitzvah. Shal Asheira an Esrik from an Avedis Zara tree. Vishal Irani Dacha so an Esrik that comes from a city that all the people serve the Avedis Zara and it has to be burnt is also pasul. So as I mentioned, Rashi says in the previous Mishnah that these are halachas that are repeated and the only reason it says it again is for the continuation of the unique halachas regarding Esrik. Shal Arla Pasul An Esrik that comes from an Arla tree or tree the first three years which is Arla is Pasul. Shal Truma Tmeya Esrik that comes from a tree that is Truma Tmeya is also Pasul. This will all be explained in the Gemara. Shal Truma Tahira If it's Truma which is tired and you can eat that's the difference between Truma Tmeya and Truma Tahira. Truma Tmeya you're not allowed to eat. You can use it as fuel for a fire. You can have a no from it but not eat it. Truma Tahira you can eat it. Lo yitel. It still shouldn't be used for the mitzvah of Esrik. Vim Natal. However, if it was used, kosher. It's kosher. Shal Demai. An Esrik of Demai. The concept of Demai is the produce that grows by an Amoretz. And we can't rely on him for taking the proper maestris, it's a suffix, and therefore you have to take maestris again. Beishamai paislut. Beishamai say that this esrik is posel. Ubeisilo machshirin. And Beisilo say it's kosher. Shal maeser sheni, if it's maeser sheni, be Yerushalayim, in Yerushalayim, the place where the maeser sheni is allowed to be eaten. So lo yitel. Also, l'chadchil it shouldn't be taken uh, for the esrik. Vim notal, b'diyevit, if you used it, kosher. It's also kosher. Now, different details regarding the actual esrig itself. Also, chazazis al rubai. If you have on the esrig these spots or these bo- sort of boils that are on the esrig on most of the esrig, or nitla pitmasai, if the pitim that the top of the esrig was removed, niklaf, if it was peeled, the outer peel of it was peeled off, and we're talking about mamish, the very outer peel in a way that there's nothing really missing from the esrig itself, nizdak. If the esrig is split, also split in a way that there's nothing really missing of it. Nikev v'chaser kalshu. If it has a hole and there is something missing from the esrig, so then pasul. The esrig is pasul. Also chazaz es amiyutai. If it has these spots, these boils, and only part of the esrig, on the minority of the esrig, or natal uktai, the ukits where it attaches to the tree, the bottom of the esrig is removed. Nikev v'lechaser kalshu. There's a hole in the esrig, but there's nothing missing of the esrig. Then kosher. In all these cases, it's kosher. Esrig hakushi, an esrig which comes from Eretz Kush. Rashi says, and it's a black esrig. Pasul. Vahayorik kekarsi, an esrig that's green, like leek, very dark green. Rav Meir machsher. Rav Meir says it's still kosher. But Rav Yehuda paisel. Rav Yehuda says it's pasul. And Gemara explained this before because it's not yet ripe. Sheer esrig cotton. What's the size of the smallest esrig? Rav Meir aimekegos. Rav Meir says as small as a walnut. Rabbi Yehuda Aimeh Kibetzer. Rabbi Yehuda says it has to be at least as large as an egg. Ubegadayl, what's the size of the largest esrig? Kedei shir yeichas shnayim biyadayl. In order that you can hold two esrigim in one hand. Divrei Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda Aimeh, Rabbi Yehuda says, Afila echad bishtei yadav. Even if the esrig is so large that you need two hands to hold one esrig, it's still going to be kosher. So the first thing the Gemara begins the discussion about esrig, Let's identify this esrig. From where in the Pasuk do we see that the esrig is the esrig? Tan Rabbanon, so we learn in Abraisa. It says in the Torah, pre eitz hadar. So what is this pre? Eitz, shetam eitzai, upiria yishave. It's a fruit that the taste of the, of the wood of the tree and the fruit itself is the same. That's why it says pre eitz. Have a ze esrig. So this is the esrig, that that's the case with the esrig. Frek te gemara ve'eime pilpilin. But maybe it refers to pepper, to black pepper. Kedetanya, as we learned in Abrai, Hoi Rab Meir, Aim Rab Meir said, Mi mash mash anema on a tatem kol eitz. It says in the Pasuk that you'll plant any tree in Eretz Yisrael. So this is the Pasuk where it talks about the mitzvah of our law. Say any yideh shu eitz machel. Don't I know that we're talking about a fruit tree? Ma tamad loima eitz machel. Why does it say eitz machel? Because we're speaking about an eitz, shetam eitzoi upir yeshove. A tree that the taste of the wood and the fruit is the same. This refers to the, to the pepper. It comes to teach you that pilpulin are also chayv in Arla. And also we see here that ve'ein Eretz Yisrael chaseira klum. Eretz Yisrael lacks nothing. Everything, including black pepper, grows in Eretz Yisrael as well. It lacks nothing in it.
So therefore we see that pilpulin is also the same taste of the pri and the eights. So maybe that's what the Pasuk means here when it says pri eights, pri eights other. So the Gemara answer is no, that can't be. Awesome, if it would be pilpulin, so that option is not, not going to work. It's not possible to fulfill the mitzvah with this pepper. Hey, Chinavid, what are you going to do? Ninkait Chada, you're going to take one pepper for the mitzvah? Laiminkere liki chasa, it's too small, you won't even notice that you're holding something in your hand. Lekachtem, it has to be something significant that you're taking in your hand. Ninkait, today, oitlasa, so you should take maybe two or three of these peppers so you could see that you're holding something. But Echad Amrachmana, the Taita says that it's only, it should be only one, or the other Gersi here is Pri Echad, it's just one fruit, not two or three fruits. So, so therefore, the Pilpulin is not an option. Rabbi Aimer, Rabbi has a different shot, how we know it's the Yasrik. Al Tikri Hadar El Hadir. Instead of reading it Hadar, read it Hadir, which means the barn. Ma dear Zed, just like in a barn, Yeshbay, Gedailim, Muktanim, Tmimim, Balimumin, you have all kinds of animals in the barn, large animals, small, and uh, unblemished, blemished, they're all there together in the barn. Hochanami, same with the asterisk tree, Yeshbay, Gedailim, Muktanim, large fruits, small fruits, Tmimim, Balimumin, blemished fruits, unblemished fruits, there's all kinds on the same tree. So the Gemara asks, wait a minute, is this something that's unique about an asterisk tree? Otu, Shar, Petis, how are you going to tell me other fruit trees, for example, an apple tree? You don't have larger apples and smaller apples in the same season. Some ripen before, some ripen later. Tmimim, balimumin, apples that are full and good, and other apples that are ruined and they're balimumin, they're blemished. So you have this by other trees as well. Ella the Gemara says, This is what he meant to say, you have to dash in a little bit differently. Ah, chaboim ketanim, even before the smaller sreigim grow from the new season this year there are larger esraigim that are on the tree from the previous year this is something that's unique by the esraigim it could stay on the tree an entire year and Rashi actually says two or three years and it goes through all the seasons and even when you start the next season and there are new small esraigim coming out you still have these larger esraigim from the previous season that's what we're talking about over here that's what's unique about the esraig Abavo Omar, Abavo has a different way of learning this out. Al Tikri Hador, Elo Hador. It, it uh, dwells on the tree, which means Dovar Shador Bi Lonoi Mishona Lashona. The Esrig remains on the tree from one year to the next, or as I mentioned, it can remain on the tree even up to three years. That's how we know that it's specifically the Esrig. So this is brought in all the Maimarim of I mentioned this before, the fact that the Esr could tolerate all the seasons, not only tolerate, but actually it grows from all the seasons. The reason why the Esr is so beautiful is because each one of the seasons adds another part to the beauty of the Esr, especially when it's on the tree a long time. So that's what shows the Achtos, the unity that comes out in this fruit of the Esr. One more Pshat Gemara says, Ben Al Tikri Hadar, don't read the Pasik as Hadar, but rather Ela Idur. Or some uh, say Hidur, which means she came below. In Yivani, in the uh, Greek, the, the word for water is Idur. And what's, how do we know that that's the asterisk tree? Because the Ezehi Shagadl al Kalmayim, which tree is not going to grow only with rainwater, but it needs more water. It needs even drawn water. You have to irrigate and keep on watering it. Havayim is asterisk. That's the asterisk tree. Asterisk is different than all trees. It's a weaker tree. You can't just rely on rainwater. So it has to have, has to be watered all the time. Kolmayim. So therefore it's called an idur, a tree that relies on a lot of water. So that's what the hodr means. That's how we know it's an asterisk. The next thing it said in the Mishnah was, Shalashayr v'shalir anidachas posel. And a shayr in anidachas it's going to be posel. So the question is, my time, why is this posel? So the Gemara explained this before already. The reason is, kivin de l'sreifakoi. If it's from a Iran Idachat, so it's destined to be dirt burnt, Ksusi Machsis Shiure, and therefore it has no shear. It's as if it's been burnt already, and the size, the minimum size that has to be, three Tvachim regarding a Lulav it was, but over here regarding whatever the size of an Esrig is, whether a walnut or a Beitza, it has no shear. The next thing it said was, Vishal Arla Puzzle. If it comes from Arla, if it's in the first three years, which is Arla, so then it's going to be Puzzle as well. My timer. What's the reason if it's our law, it's going to be possible? Pligi ba Rabchi Baravin ve Rabasi. So Rabchi Baravin and Abasi argue about this. Now the basis of both of their opinions is the word Lachem that it says by the Dald Minim. That has to be yours. And a tree which is our law is not yours. But the question is, what aspect of the fact that it's not yours is the issue here? 
Chad Omar, so one of their opinions is, L'fisheim ba'hetar achila. Since it's something that you're not allowed to eat, that's not called lochem. Lochem means it has to be yours in every way. You can have a no of it however you want, including eating it. Chad Omar, another opinion is, L'fisheim ba'din momin. Since you can't have any ano of it, so you have no monetary ownership in it. So it's not lochem, monetarily speaking. So now the Gemara says, So at this point we're thinking that man the boy the one that requires that it should be lochem to the extent that you can eat it, le boy din He doesn't require though that monetarily it should be yours. And we'll see soon in the Gemara an example for this. Man the boy din mamin, and the one that says that it has to be yours monetarily, le boy He doesn't hold of the fact that it has to be yours also to the extent that you can eat it. These are two distinct opinions how to interpret the lachem. Lachem in what sense? Either the ano including achile, or lachem in the sense of ownership, the monetary ownership. So now the Gemara has a question from what it said in our Mishnah. Tanan and the Mishnah it said, Shal trume tmeyo, if you're using an esrik from tome trume, so then puzzle. This esrik is puzzle. So now why is this esrik puzzle? What's the story with trume tmeyo? You can't eat it. However, you still have ownership over it. You can use it for other things. You can use it as, as fuel. So now, the opinion that says that the issue is that it has to be lechem, that you can eat it. So we understand, since you can't eat it, so it's not lechem. But according to the opinion that the only requirement of lechem is that it should own it monetarily. So then am I. What's the issue if you can't eat it? But still, monetarily, you have ownership over it. You can have a nav, you can use it for fuel. So why can't you use it? You could use it as fuel under your, your, what you're cooking, and therefore it's still yours. So Ella, the Gemara says, what do I see from this Mishnah? As far as the Esrik being something that you're allowed to eat, that qualification of Lechem, nobody disagrees that that's what Lechem means, that you could eat it. What's the argument here? Bidin moment. The argument over here is regarding the money, the monetary ownership. So one opinion is that you only need that it should be allowed to eat for you, but din moment lebinon. But a monetary ownership is not necessary. Omar Sovar, the other opinion is din mamin nami binon. That there's both requirements. Lachem means that you can eat it, and also that you have a monetary ownership over it. It's both. That's the pshat in the uh, in the machlekes. The machlekes is whether you need both or just the fact that it has the uh, heter to eat it is enough. Okay, so now Taisus points out that really, regarding Arla, the Gemara could have given a different reason that Arla is something which is destined to be burnt, and therefore it's ksusi mechsus shiyure. So the same reason it said before by Irani Dachas that it has no shear, you could say the same thing by Arla, which is supposed to be burnt. You don't have to get into this whole discussion of Lachem and what aspect of Lachem. But Taisa says it's true, but the relevance of what the Gemara says here will only be for the following piece of the Gemara, where it's going to discuss Maisa Shani, which is of course not something that gets burnt. And over there, this discussion of what aspect of Lachem is necessary is relevant. So now the Gemara brings up the, 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 the Nafkemin of Maisa Shani. So my benayu, what is the difference between these two opinions if you also need the, the uh, lachem to mean that it's qualified, that it, you, it's monetary ownership, not just that you can eat it? Ike benayu, the difference is my sesheni b'yudushalayim alibe the Rab Meir. Regarding my sesheni in Yudushalayim, according to the opinion of Rab Meir. As Rashi here quotes in the Gemara in Kedushin, there's machlekes between the Rabbanan and Rab Meir. What's the status of, my, of, the, of the monetary ownership regarding my sesheni? Rabbanan's opinion is that the Maise Sheni belongs to the individual. It's his. According to Rab Meir, Maise Sheni is mom and gavoya. It belongs to the Abishter. You have to bring it to Yerushalayim and you eat it there, so it's yours to eat, but it doesn't belong to you. It's mom and gavoya. So now, according to Rab Meir, that says that this Maise Sheni is mom and gavoya, the one that says that the only thing that is important is that it has to have a heter achile. And the issue with Arla is that you can't eat it. So So this has a heta achila, so therefore it's good. The opinion that says that it's not enough that it has a heta achila, but you also have to have a monetary ownership over it. According to Rav Meir, my sesheni is the Eibishter's. You're eating it, but it belongs to the Eibishter. So therefore there's no, it's not enough lachem. It doesn't have both qualifications of heta achila and that it's your mama to be able to be yaitzah the mitzvah with it.
So now the Gemara says to Stayim, I'll prove to you. So before we brought that this was Machloikis between Ravasi and, uh, and uh, Rabchir Barovin, and we didn't name exactly who says what. We just said Chadomar Chadomar. The Gemara now will bring a raya that what exactly Rabasi's opinion was. So the Testayim, let's prove that Rabasi Domal if shame but didn't mumin. Rabasi is the one that says that it's not enough that you can eat it, but it also has to be something that you have monetary ownership of it. Domar Rabasi, because Rabasi said, Esrik from Sheni. If it's an Esrik from Maisa Sheni, Ledivre Rab Meir, according to Rab Meir's opinion, Ain't Adam Yaitzaba Yudei Chayvasa Biyamtif. You can't be Yaitz with it on Yantif because you don't have monetary ownership. Ledivre Chachamim, but according to the Chachamim, that Maisa Sheni in Yerushalayim is yours. You have a mitzvah to eat it in Yerushalayim, but it belongs to you. So Adam Yaitzi Lechavasa Biyamtif. So you could be Yaitzi Chiv in Yantif. To Stayim, this is a clear proof that according to Ravasi, that's the requirement, the monetary ownership. The Heter Achil is not enough, you also have to have monetary ownership, and therefore it's a machlaikis between Rav Meir and Rabbanan. Gufe, let's now look at this statement itself that Ravasi said, there's more that he said there. Om Ravasi, Esrik Shlom Sheni. If it's an Esrik from Maise Sheni, Lediv Rav Meir, according to Rav Meir, Ein Adon Yetzi Vaydeche Vasebi Yomtev, you can't be Yetzi Yechiv because it's not yours monetarily speaking. However, according to the Chachamim, Adam Yaitze by Yedeche Vasa Biyamtev. You could be Yaitze Yechiv and Yantev because it is yours monetarily. Similarly, he said, Matza from Maise Sheni. Matza from Maise Sheni. The Divrei Rab Meir and Adam Yaitze by Yedeche Vasa Biyamtev. It's not yours monetarily. You can't be Yaitze the Mitzvah of Matza. The Divrei Chachamim, Adam Yaitze by Yedeche Vasa Biyamtev. According to the Chachamim, the Matza is yours because you can eat it. That's enough that you can be Yaitze Yechiv and Pesach. A third, a third scenario, Isa shall Maisa Sheni, dough from Maisa Sheni. So the Divrei Rab Meir Pturim and Achala, according to Rab Meir, it's Pater from Chala, because it's not yours monetarily. The Divrei Chachamim Chayeves Bechala, and according to the Chachamim, it is yours. So you Chayev and Chala. So Maske Flood of Papa. So Rav Papa asked now on what Rav Asi said. Isa. We understand why by dough for Chala it's similar to. The Dalad Minim, where it has to be yours, the Titus says, Lakachtem Lachem. So over here as well, Ksiv, Reishis, Arisa, Isaychem. The Titus says it has to be your dough. But an Esrig Nami, Ksiv Lachem, Misha Lachem. Esrig, of course, it also says Lachem that it has to be yours. Ela Matza. However, when it comes to Matza, Mi Ksiv Matzaschem. By Matza, does the Titus say that it has to be your Matza in order to be Yetzir the Mitzvah? You could even maybe borrow a Matza and be Yetzir that way. That is Gzeir Shava. As ye lechem lechem, we learn Gzeir Shava lechem lechem. Ksiv hocha, here the Pasik says lechem aini. By Matzah the Taita describes it as lechem aini. Ksiv hocha, and it says also regarding the mitzvah of chale, v'hoye bal cholchem mi lechem aaret. So there it also uses the term lechem. Ma'la alon mishalachem, just like over there, it has to be by, by uh, chale. It has to be your dough to be chayev. V'loi mishal maiser. And not if it's my Sashani, because then, according to Rab Meir, monetarily, it's not yours. Afka Mishalachem. So to buy matzah, it has to be your matzah, Veloi Michel Meiser. And it can't be matzah from Meiser that's not yours, according to Rab Meir. Lay Mimisayele, shall we say that we have a raya to what Rabasi said? Because it says, Nabrai Seisla Shal Meiser Sheni, the dough of Meiser Sheni, Pturam and Achala, is potter from Chala, Divri Rab Meir, that's Rab Meir's opinion, which says that Meiser Sheni is monetarily not yours. The Chachamim Ma'imrim Chayev is Bechala Chachamim, which say that Ma'aseh Sheni is yours monetarily is Chayev and Chala. So we have exactly what Rabasi said. This machlaik is between Rab Meir and the Chachamim. So the Gemara questions this. Leime Misayeyele. You're saying let us say that this will prove what Rabasi said. He he. This is precisely what Rabasi said. Why did we say Leime? This is exactly what he said. Ella. So the Gemara explains. The Chiddush over here is Mide Baha Pligi, Baha Nami Pligi. Should we say that we could prove over here that if regarding the Chala, the mitzvah of Chala, they argue whether you have monetary ownership of a Maiser and therefore you could do the mitzvah of Chala here or not, if they argue regarding Chala, Baha Nami Pligi, I could apply that Machlaikis regarding the Dalad Minim as well and regarding Matzah as well. Oh, Dilma, or maybe there's actually a Svara to distinguish between them. Why? Because Shani he said the Omakra Arisechem Arisechem Trei Zimni by Chala the Torah uses the expression of Arisechem that has to be yours twice. So there's a Svara to say only by Chala is it required to be a hundred percent yours. Not only that you have a Heter Achila, but also that you have monetary ownership. But that's specifically Benigayet to Chala. Anything other than Chala, 
by other things, by matzah and by dal minim, where it only uses the term lachem once, or maybe matzah actually we learn out from with exeda shove from chalab, but that by dal minim, where it only says lachem once, maybe over there the lesser requirement of lachem would be enough that you have a heter achila. So therefore, the Gemara is saying lema, that maybe we can prove and we could compare, but it's not 100% clear. So it said in the Mishnah, shall trumet meye psula, if you have tome trumet, puzzle for the lulav. So what's the reason? As we explained before, the lesba heterachila, that everybody agrees, if you can't eat it, it doesn't qualify for lechem and it's not good for the mitzvah. But shall trumet tahayra la yitayl trumet tahayra, even though you can eat it and you have ownership over it, still lechatchila, you shouldn't use it for the mitzvah. Why not? So here there's a gzayim with Rabbanan and there's a machlaikis about this. Pligi barabami virabasi, so there's a machlaikis between Rabbami and Rabasi. Chadomar, one says the reason is mipnei she machshira. The reason is because the esrig, the lulev, the dal minim, so you're going to make it susceptible to tumah. Because the, as Rashi brings there, the Gemara uses the expression that you take the lulev and esrig, you put it in the water, you take it out of the water. On Shabbos, you're not allowed to take it out of the water. So it's wet. And when something is wet, it becomes susceptible to tumah. So if you're taking truma and you're using it for the dal minim, you're making it wet, it becomes susceptible to tumah. And that's, that's something you're not allowed to do. As Rashi here brings, that it says, Mishmeres Turu Moisai. The taich of Mishmeres Turu Moisai means that you have to guard it from not becoming tummy. Chadomar, another opinion is, Mipnei Shem The issue is that you're destroying it, you're ruining it. You're in your hands, you're touching it, and you're scratching it, and you're ruining it, and you're not going to be able to eat it. That's also the same thing, the Mishmeres. You're not allowed to destroy the Truma. My Beinayu, what's the difference between these two opinions? Kogain, the example would be, Shekara Leo Shem, Chutz Mikliposa Chitzayna. You made this Dalad Minim, this fruit, this Esreg, or whatever it may be, you made it Truma, excluding the outer peel. That you left to be cholin. You didn't make that truma. So then, if the issue over here is that you're making truma susceptible to tome, the fact is this truma will become tome. If the issue is that you're destroying the truma by holding on to it and you're making it dirty and blemished, so leke, then it's not an issue because the outer peel was never made truma. Said in the Mishnah of him, not al kshede, the trumet to hoire bidiyeved, if you took it, it's going to be kosher. Why is it kosher? Laman dom ipnei shem bet achile, the one that says that lechem, what's the requirement of lechem, that you have to be able to eat it? Hare yesh bet achile, you can eat it. Laman dom ipnei shem bet din mamein, the opinion that says that it has to be yours monetarily in addition. Hare yesh bet din mamein, trumet to hoire is also yours monetarily. So therefore, either way, it's not an issue. Then it said in the Mishnah that Dmai cannot be used for an Esrig either. My time at the Basil. So there was, a, was actually a Machloikis, Basil and Beishamai. Basil said that Dmai could be used, and Beishamai said it cannot be used. So what is the Pshar in this Machloikis? So the Gemara explains. Kivin the boy, so according to Basil, Kivin the boy, since a person has an option to make all of his, to give away his money, it should all be Hefkir, and then the Hava Ani. And then he becomes a poor individual, the and when you're poor, you're allowed to eat the mai. Hashtanami lochem karinabe. So therefore, even now, before you are mafkir all your money, but since you have the option of eating it in that way, it's considered to be yours. There's a hatarachilu for you. And guests also that have nothing to eat, you can give them to mai. Beishamai, what's Beishamai's opinion? Ani leochel demai. But an ani cannot eat my. This time we learned in the Mishnah, Machilin or Anim, the Mai Visach Sanya, the Mai. And from Ravone, Tane, Tane, we learned in the Braise, Beishama Yemrim, E Machilin is our Anim Visach Sanya, the Mai. That we do not allow even Anim and even an Achsanya that have nothing else to eat, they cannot eat the Mai either. Well, Basil Loimrim, Basil say, Machilin is our Anim, the Mai Visach Sanoim, the Mai. Basil will say that you could give to eat them the Dmai, and that's the reason why it's considered to be a hetra chile, it'll qualify for the mitzvah. The next thing it said on the Mishnah was, Shalmai Sushani, be Yerushalayim. You're not allowed to use Lechat Chile, the Mai Sushani, even in Yerushalayim for the mitzvah. What's the reason? So we go back to the Sema and Machlaikis we had before regarding Trumit Tahira. The Mandama of Nesha Machshira, the one that said there, the issue is that you're making the Truma susceptible to Tuma, the same thing is here. Harei machshira, you're making it susceptible to tumah, as Rashi here brings by the Meister as well, which has kedusha. You also have to be careful with it to guard it, not to become tome. The mandam pneishem afsida, the one that says that you're ruining it by using it as an esrik. Harei mafsida, it's the same issue that you're ruining it. 
If you went and you used it, it is going to be kosher. So the one that says that the issue is only if you can't eat it. So according to everybody, you're allowed to eat in Yerushalayim. There's a heta achila. If there's an additional requirement of lachem that monetarily it has to be yours. So how does it say here in the Mishnah that my sesheni bidiyavet if you use it it's good for the Mishnah? Homani rabbanani. Our Mishnah is following the opinion of the rabbanon that say that my sesheni belongs to you. It's yours. So therefore, even monetarily, so you are to the mitzvah. The next thing in the Mishnah now going to the actual esrog itself. Also chazazis if it has these boils on the esrog. The following aloha, Rabbeinu Agadol, which is Rav, said this. Hamakim yeh be'ezra, and Ebeshe should be in his, to his assistance. Leishanu el b'makim echad. It's only if it has most boils and most of the esrog, but it's in one place. Avol b'shnayim eshloishim ekaimis. If it's spread around in two or three different areas, kasha. It's going to be kasha. So on this, Rav asks him, on Malei Rav, other Rav. On the contrary, if these spots are spread around in two or three different places in the yesterday, so then it's speckled with these spots and it's, it should be possible. It's a change of a color and it's not good. So rather, the statement in the name of Rav was said on the Sefer. What did it say there? Al kosher. If you only have these boils on the esrig, on the minority of the esrig, it'll be kosher. On this, Am Rav Chiste, Dov Azera Ben Ogadol Amar Rav Amokim Yeh Beezra. Rav said this, and Eibush should be in it to his assistance. Lo Yishanu Ela B'Mokim Echad. This is only if those boils that are in the minority of the esrig are in one spot. I will be Shnayim Eshloishim Mekaymes. But if it's spread around in two, three different places, then I will Eikim Enumer. Then it's like a speckled esrig or pasul, and it'll be pasul. On my Rav, Rav adds another chumra to this. Val Chait Mai. If you're on the top part of the esrig, where the esrig begins to curve going up to the top part of the esrig, that's what's called the chaitim. Right? As Rashi says, mishapeya misham, it goes to the top, it gets, it curves over there. Have it to then, even if you have a little chazazis, a tiny, it's, it's just a little bit of boil over there, it's also going to be possible. And this is the source of this halacha when it comes to an esrig. The way to look at an esrig to see if it's kosher is to look at the shlisha elyain or at the chaitim, as the Gemara calls it here, where it curves on the top. That's the most important part of the esrig, that it should be completely, completely clean.